Hey guys, welcome back to my house under construction. This is the real rebuild job site, my personal family home. And on today's video, we're gonna be talking about cabinet planning. Now this phase of the construction, I don't have any cabinets in, obviously. We've just started electrical, plumbing, and mechanical, but it's really important to think about cabinets at this phase of construction. So today's video, five cabinet planning tips. Let's get going. All right guys, so we're talking cabinet planning and let me tell you the process that I used on this house that I really generally use on my projects. Most of the time the architect is designing the general spaces and putting a rather generic cabinet plan in and then you're having an interior designer help you with selections and figuring out what finishes and materials are gonna happen. But the critical phase when we think about cabinet planning is when you get your cabinet maker to start what we call shop drawings. Now we're in my master bathroom right here. This is actually the wall that's gonna have my vanity and my master. And I wanna show you why starting early with your cabinet maker to get shop drawings is vitally important. And this is tip number one. If I have my shop drawings early, then my cabinet maker can put these really important measurements on here, which is, in this case, center lines for both of my sinks. Now this is the plan view, meaning the bird's eye view. Here's the elevation, so there's my two sink fronts right there. And my cabinet maker's done a really nice job of fully dimensioning this, so I know exactly what to expect. And it's critical to have this completed before your trade start, because number one, my plumber needs to know exactly where those sinks are gonna lay out, so he can make sure his plumbing is in the right spot. So for instance, I use my shop drawings to say, there's the center line of my wife's sink, there's the center line for my sink, and now I know that vanity width, so now I can ensure that my drains, my plumbing, everything is gonna go correctly in there. That also means that I've got everything I need for electrical, which is vitally important, because sconces, recessed mirrors, outlets, all those things are gonna be based on my cabinet layout. All right guys, busy day in the job site. My plumbers are working on plumbing roofs, but like I said earlier, this is the perfect time to talk about cabinets. Good segue here, I've got David Betts with Benchmark Kitchen and Bath. Now David is my cabinet guy who's a dealer for a cabinet maker that we're going to be using on this job that we just started recently. We've, we've actually got, what, one job we've completed already with yep. Crystal yep. Cabinets out of Minnesota. So we're going to be talking about Crystal and specifically for my house, but I think a lot of what we're going to be talking about will translate to all pre-finished, pre-made cabinets. So David, we talked about shop drawings earlier. Give us a little tour of my kitchen and what these shop drawings look like. Sure thing. So this is elevation C, so that's going to be ovens over there. we got two applied panel fridges right here. There's an 18-inch Miele unit here. That's the freezer. A 30-inch here. And then we've got cabinets in the middle, right? Yep. With countertop. And then I've got a Miele wall oven and a Miele microwave going on top of that over there, which actually segues nicely to tip number two, which is you need to choose your appliances early. As you're gonna look at these shop drawings, you're gonna see that David customized these shop drawings and my cabinets specifically for the appliance selections. Now, if you're building a kitchen that has, let's say a 30 inch slide in range, LG, Samsung, Whirlpool, yeah, all those all the are same. No, pretty much the same on that, right? However, if you're doing other models, if you're doing a drop-in cooktop, a gas, of an electric, a 30 or a 36, there's so many options and changes. You gotta decide that to give to David, your cabinet guy, early, so when the shop drawings come out, they're correct. So much so that I couldn't even hold on the decision. Let's say there's a lot of manufacturers of built-in 30-inch refrigerators, right? Summer door, Sub-Zero. I could get several manufacturers. I decided on Miele and the 30-inch Miele and the 18-inch Miele freezer, which is next to it, right. have such specific requirements for the overlay doors, for the electrical, for the plumbing. You gotta choose that early. All right, David, keep going on the tour. What else do we have elevation-wise? So this is elevation B over here. We chose a custom hood from Crystal, but because we're doing, uh, we wanted the tile backsplash to be the kind of focal point, we have no uppers on either side. So we had them custom make that, make some modifications to it. There's gonna be a 42 inch cooktop that goes in here. Um, the really nice thing about the Miele cooktops is that they're pretty shallow. So we're actually gonna be able to utilize this drawer that 
our CAD person wrote false front, but we're going to change that, and it's going to be functional. It would be full of spatulas and cooking tools, et cetera. Then hey, we're going to have pots one, and pans below. One quick note I was going to mention on that. This is a 36-inch base cabinet. I decided to do the 42-inch cooktop. Yep. So I've got the uh, full width on there. So we've got a 42-inch hood, but this base cabinet was 36. Because that's such a shallow unit, it's we could accommodate that. interfere with any of our drawers. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Now the last elevation is this one where the uh, kitchen sink is. Will you walk us through that one too, Dave? Sure thing. So you've got drawers coming out this way, so necessarily, by necessity, we're going to have a blind cabinet here. There's a really nice pull-out unit that's like a kidney-shaped unit, what we call the Le Mans. We put a note on there. One really important thing that we want to start out whenever we're doing cabinet layouts, it's the center of that window. That's kind of our keystone. It's Everything must work off of that. We've got a panel-ready dishwasher right next to the sink. That's another very important kind of spec thing where Matt was saying before, you really want to get your appliances dialed in. Mila especially, they're about mm, five sixteenths narrower than a standard dishwasher. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Just yep. slightly so narrower. The panel spec on a Mila is uh, it's 23 and 7 sixteenths is the, you know, imperial conversion of it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So and you so, got to really decide that yeah. early, so especially if you, the panel. If I just kind of blew past that, we'd have a 24-inch hole, and then we'd have these huge <laughs> reveals on either side that, you know, we don't want. Love it, Dave. Right. Good call. Yeah. Uh, we have an end view on this previous elevation. One really nice thing about um, inset cabinets is that we can do a flush inset door, and you can see that detail here. So it's not going to be just a panel stuck onto the side of the cabinet. It's going to look like the fronts where everything is very flush. Yeah. Now, David, we made a mock-up on the island, which we'll talk about in a minute, but talk to us through what the island's going to look like and the functionality of the island. Sure thing. So uh, on this end, as you walk in, your wife, Christy, wanted a double two oven setup. So we've got the one over there, but then we have one kind of hidden down here where it's not really that noticeable, but it's kind of in the range of, of where our, our cooktop is, and yep. it's just a nice little mini triangle. And just to clarify, David, for those of you who don't realize, this is a pocket door, and the frame's coming this week, uh, so I haven't set that yet, but this is actually a 2-8 door. So there's my door width right there, which means the rest of this panel will get filled in, and the cabinets are actually coming out here. Yeah, they're going to so be in So my cooktop's right yourself. in there somewhere. Uh, but this will get walled off eventually. So I'll have oven, microwave, and then I'll have a second oven kind of hidden underneath the island. And then what other functions do I have on this island, David? A pair of drawer banks here. The trash unit is over here. So when you're, you know, you're typically next to your dishwasher, your sink's here, and she's going to be able to just swing around and the trash is right behind right her. There, so it'll be on the end it's another the handy thing for when you're entertaining. People kind of always want to get in here and throw their stuff away. So if it's out at the end, that's where there's going to be kind of a group of people. Yep. The opposite side, so we've got 41 inches here, a typical base cabinet is 24, the opposite side leaves us 17 inches. So these are going to be pushed open doors and this is going to be a kind of what they call a dummy panel on the side of the oven okay, there. Yeah. And then we're going to have some more pushed open doors here that it's, you're not really going to be able to discern what's a dummy panel and what's a functional cabinet. So you'll have about this much depth, can storage, cereal, stuff like that, sure, a little sure. extra pantry. And then David, talk to me about this width between edge of island and edge of this bank of cabinets over here. What do we have going on So here? for you, we set up 42. 36 is kind of the industry minimum, mm -hmm. but you're really going to be kind of shimmying between people if you do that. And 42 is a good balance. If you had a huge house, you could stretch that to 48, but um, I think yeah, 42 is a nice middle ground where two people size. can definitely pass. You know, you can have two people working in here and kind of shuffling around each other. Makes sense. And one thing I wanted to mention too, David, it's not obvious at this point, but I actually, with my architect kit very early on in the process, pushed this wall and lost a little bit of garage space on purpose so that I could have a bigger island. The original design with kit uh, basically had a movable island, uh, you know, a rolling type island that was kind of skinny and narrow, maybe a booze block type island yep. for a cutting board. I really like islands. This is where people gather at parties. You're going to have a drink and hang out. Yep. So I pushed this wall back two feet, which enabled me to get that 42 inches on both sides. And what's our island? I can't remember. Like we're, 40... we're 41, and so with this countertop on here, he'll be about 42 or like something like that. 42 on the island. So, yeah, and this countertop uh, is pretty long, too, and we've got an overhang on the backside, too, don't we, David? Yeah, to about 18. Okay. okay. So basically, my countertop will slide out that way have a couple bar stools underneath there, and then we've got a very nice, large, and functional area. Also gives me extra prep area, because I've got just a short countertop there. Yep. 
Lighting will not be great, even though there'll be a little bit of under cabinet lighting, whereas here it'll be really good. Um, let's go on to our next tip, David, uh, and let's talk for a minute for these guys about inset versus overlay door styles. And maybe while we're talking about doors, we can talk about these doors that you've got here. Sure. Uh, so an inset cabinet will have the door flush with the frame. Mm -hmm. It's more of a, a traditional kind of older world detail. Yep. Um, you see a lot of the English cabinet makers like Plain English and Duval Kitchens that um, I love to follow on Instagram. I get a lot of good inspiration for your jobs, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a more traditional look. You can have a beaded inset or just a, a framed inset. Um, overlay allows a lot more kind of wiggle room for insulation time and fitment. And by overlay, you mean that door is actually overlaying the cabinet base, right? Yes. And the yep. face frame. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, and, which and means inset, you've got a little more forgiveness. Inset, we're going to be flush. This door has a little radius on it, but inset, we're going to be flush from door to frame. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be this perfect eighth inch reveal around. This is where on our future videos, when we talk about installation, it's super critical. Super critical. critical. Those, yeah, they have to be plumb and square. And so besides the, uh, the look, traditional versus maybe slightly more contemporary, why would you choose inset versus overlay or vice versa? It's a luxury, to be honest, you know. The inset. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, you can, you have that luxury to do that. And it's, it's what we, we were talking 15 to 20% upcharge to do mm -hmm. inset versus a full overlay. But it's just, it's just such a clean, crisp look, you know. The craftsmanship absolutely has to be perfect because you're going to see that black line between your door and your face frame. And if things are at all canted or not perfectly plumb, right. that door's not fit perfectly, you're gonna see it, which means you're gonna spend more as a cabinet buyer, as the builder buying from the cabinet guy, because David's crew, not only at the factory, but on the install, they need to have everything just right on the money. Yep. So it's a, it can be anywhere from 15 to maybe 25 or even higher, more. So if you're gonna spend, let's say, $20,000 on kitchen cabinets, it could be easily 25 or more thousand to go to that inset. It's probably a good estimate, yeah. 25%, 20%. Yep. I mean, even if, if the cabinets cost 14% more, as a salesperson or as a, as a installer of cabinets, I'm gonna know that we're gonna need to take a little more, you know, put a little more TLC into that install. Oh, for sure. It's gonna take you at least a day or more longer to install that kitchen with full inset because everything has to be perfect. Yeah, like on your, on your, your island, we've got legs that run down to the floor so to give us kind of a furniture detail. So this will be false panels on the end. This panel is going to run straight to the ground. And you'll have these furniture legs. And what I'm going to do when I order these is order them a little bit long. And when we come in, we're going to shoot a laser. We're going to have that thing upside down. And we're going to cut the legs off and flip it so Ooh, that it like sits that. level. You know, Smart. we can set up the laser, measure down. This side, 30, 36 and 7 eighths. This mm -hmm. side, 36 and 5 eighths. Cut the leg, trim it and it fits right on the floor. It's I beautiful. Love it. I love it. Now on that tip, David, the inset versus overlay, there's really no clear winner. It's really your decision what you want to do. Let's talk for a minute though about my next tip, which is site finished versus pre-finished. I've been doing this 25 years. I've done a lot of both over the years. You so have you, David. Yeah. Talk to me about uh, the pros and cons of finishing your cabinets on site or even building them and finishing them on site versus what we're doing where Crystal's actually painting them in the factory. In the factory, they can bake this on. They have machines that will actually measure the temperature of the surface temperature of the door. So this door goes into a conveyor belt. It's sprayed flat. It rotates through the oven for about 15 minutes. And then the, uh, the guy or gal at the factory can pull it out, touch it. It's cured. It's dry to the touch. It's not going to off gas nearly as much in your house. And it's a two part system. So they add a catalyst to it in the factory that would allow you that you can even put acetone, you know, it's insane wow. how durable it is. That's yeah, amazing. It's very chemically resistant. So now on the flip on that, if we're doing this on the job site, how different is that? The, your painter is going to have to go down to, you know, his local preferred paint place and get, sometimes they'll even have a cabinet coat is one of the brands, but okay. this is not an industrial quality finish. You know, yeah. Crystal has a whole set of millions and millions of dollars worth of machinery. They're capturing the off gases. Um, so they can use these kind of more, you know, 
strong finishes. Yeah, more industrial style finishes. Yes, that are gonna hold up over time. And the other thing that I would say on this topic, uh, when I first started my company, I did a lot of site finishes 15 years ago. We see a lot of that in Austin. It's still pretty common to see, but one of the big frustrations for me as a builder was not the quality of the paint. My painter actually did an excellent job. Now, whether it held up for 20 years or not is to be, to be determined. But one of the big issues is when the cabinet maker was done, the cabinets were installed, the painter has to basically take every piece of hardware off, all the hinges, all the slides, everything needs pulled apart for him to paint correctly, which means it all needs put back together. So I have this beautiful kitchen that's all put together and working nicely, and all of a sudden every screw's got to come out and get backed out. And as someone who used to do it that way, I can tell you it's very rare that your painter is a good cabinet guy and yeah. put it back together how you left it a couple of weeks ago. Or you're then paying your cabinet maker to come back later and readjust everything. Hopefully we don't have stripped screws as they got put in the second time, all those issues. So. On this tip, I'm gonna lean heavily towards factory finished. Crystal makes an incredible product, but there's lots of other factory finished cabinet makers out there. I think the final point on that is, is the color matching and seeing your, your door come in. You know, If we want uh, Milwaukee red on your cabinet doors, we, shoot, we send them a tape measure and say match the tape measure. <laughs> um, typically, we're just pulling from a Sherwin-Williams fan deck, but you know, any of these colors can be custom made by them. We can, option, we can alter the sheen. So Actually, should, tell them this example, David. This is kind of a good example. So this is your Delta Millwork flooring. Mm -hmm. um, the designer wanted your master, which is not going to have this in it. It will be tile flooring, but she wanted it to tie in. So Crystal, we know that this is white oak. We told Crystal, give us a white oak sample door and get as close as you can to the Delta color. And I think it's beautiful. I think they yeah. did a great wash. Like the wash know. on it is perfect. Yeah, so they sent us this sample and that's the match to this floor. And the other thing that we can do is vary the sheen from basically almost dead flat to a pretty glossy finish. Generally, when you get a sample back there, there's, you know, the guy in the sample room is gonna just shoot their kind of standard, you know, semi-gloss on it. So this one's a little shinier than you're gonna get it. But we have all these sheen ranges and we can pull these fans out, these fan decks out with the different sheens on them. That's five degree. We're gonna do this in 15 degree. This door that you're looking at now is probably 33 to 40 degree gotcha. sheen. So it's got a little bit of sheen to it. And that's a number that any kind of painter can work with. You know, that's just how the industry calls it out. Yeah. Now let's talk expectations for a minute. That's one of the things I like about pre-finished is that we can set everyone's expectations early, but that also means you got to make decisions early, right? Rachel Paxton, my interior designer, picked my Delta Millworks floor and my Delta Millworks ceiling ahead of time and then said, here's what I'm thinking about, David. Give me a sample of this color from Sherwin-Williams fan deck, yep. uh, this color from a fan deck, or match this image for this walnut. David then was able to give me the samples and go, all right, here's what we're doing. Do you like this? Yep. Yes, approved, or no, I want to make this change. We'll it should be done back. early because it's, it could be a two-week turn time between I hated every one of your samples that you gave me. Let's start over, you know, yeah. so it can, you know, it's another good point for starting early. And the other reason to do that too is because I need to know my exact measurements. I've got nine foot ceilings in my kitchen here. Yeah. I've got a crown molding at the top, but everything, especially my floor to ceiling cabinets, I don't have a lot of wiggle room. So I needed to be able to tell David from my three quarter subfloor, this is actually my top of floor. And by the way, I typically will install this prior to him installing cabinets so I don't need extra scribe moldings. And then my wood ceiling, of which I have a mock-up on over there, will be actually be on the ceiling as well so that when David puts his pre-finished crown molding on, it's already on my pre-finished ceiling. There's nothing left to do yep. there. It's we measure now, really we nice. sub that out. We check our, the, the cabinet company will give you the exact uh, position of the, of the crown in, in height. And it will say, you know, maybe it's five inches when it's sitting here flat, mm -hmm. but when it's up, it's three and a quarter. That's right. So we factor that in. Your, uh, your typical inset face frame is, uh, it's an inch and a quarter here. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna shoot for that same line along the ceiling. And you're gonna give me a little bit of fudge room because your ceiling may not be perfectly level. But yeah. it gives us another, enough wiggle room where we're not, pin I've seen plenty of inset installs where the crown is pinched on the door oh, yeah. and where yeah. <laughs> it wasn't quite right. And David, just to brag on you for a minute, these shop drawings are absolutely fantastic. At the beginning of the video, I showed people how I use these for center lines. Let me show you one more thing before we go on to our last tip, David, I'll be right back. This is my wife's uh, desk area and I actually have a laundry room space uh, over here and pantry over here. What I typically do as a builder is I'll take the cabinet maker's shop drawings 
I'll tack them up in the space. So if trades have a question and I'm at lunch or whatever, we can make sure we know what's going on. And in this case, this was a late breaking change. My interior designer uh, took the original design from the architect, took my wife's input and said, no, I, I wanna do something different. She gave David a sketch on a different layout. Then David gave us this shop drawing, which then allowed me to change the electrical layout. And that's what you can see here is me going, all right, inside this cabinet, I need my Dyson. This is the knee space for the desk. I need an outlet in there for the computer. I need a couple desktop outlets. And then this door here is gonna house a rollout printer. So we need an outlet in the back. So now when my electrician's on site, you can see all those boxes here. He just started wiring those. That process works really well. Now, if we had a higher budget, like a lot of times my jobs are, where there's an architect who's got lots of time uh, ahead of time, you know, if I'm working with Alter Studios or if I'm working with uh, David Weber or with Tim Cuppet, they've spent a lot more time ahead of time in design and frankly more money from the clients to verify those things. But most of my jobs uh, or my personal house, we're going back and forth a little bit with the cabinet maker on the job to sure. figure that out. So great job on all that, David. Last tip, David, that I want to talk about is mock-ups on the job. Tell me what uh, we built here. This wasn't you. This is actually Andrew who built this. Yeah, your guy Andrew built this island. This is the exact size that your crystal island was predetermined to be. And yeah. so now you can come in here with your wife and, and do a walkthrough. You are going to further do the lowers. Yeah, after I saw this, I'll be honest, David, I thought, you know, I wonder if this is going to feel too big. So I'm going to have Andrew make me a little mock-up of the kitchen sink cabinet, you know, 24 inches deep. Uh, my cabinets are 37 and 3 quarters to finish uh, uh, height on countertops. I want to see what that distance looks like. I also want to kind of mock up what my door swing looks like on my fridge. Make sure I've got plenty of room because it's not too late for us to shrink this island an inch or two or three. If, if we you need could to. walk past this big door while it's open, that would be, That'd be nice. ideal. Yeah, so we'll look at that. It's not too late for us to do that. However, we did place the order already for these cabinets. Yep. And you'll notice we're still in the rough end stage and yet my cabinets are on order. Really critical to think about this ahead of time. David, what else did I miss? Anything that, as we talked that uh, we didn't miss or that we didn't talk about? No, I think we're good. I think uh, for someone who's going to do this, I think it is very important that if you can mock it up in foam, do it. You know, if you have the time, it's a couple hundred dollars worth of pink foam from Home Depot and some tape, and it's super easy to cut, and you just make boxes, and uh, you can kind of walk around, and I think you were a little bit you know, seeing this here in person, we were all like, wow, okay, oh, that's, that's something. <laughs> so we have the chance now, the order's been placed, but it's not in production yet. And so, you know, we have a couple weeks where we can say, let's pull two inches out of this. You know, we lose it from the storage on this side, no big deal. You know, the last thing I want to mention on this mock-up too that I forgot to mention was I've got some pendant lights. I've got two uh, that are going to come down and light the space. And I already know what those are. We've selected those. But figuring out the height and the location on the island would be really nice. So I'm gonna have Andrew make me a fake light, hang it from the ceiling, and that way we can verify where those junction boxes are. And a great way to do that is to, you find the center of the island, shoot a laser on it, mm -hmm. it's right up on the ceiling, it's you're marked out, you're good. Those yeah. plumb line lasers are so easy yeah. to use. Learned that from a video years, years ago. They're really the handy. Madera setting sure. windows. <laughs> David, thank you for the help. If you guys are uh, interested in following David on Instagram or seeing his work, if you're in Austin, I'll put a link to him in the description. Crystal, of which David is a dealer, sells nationwide. They have a great dealer network. I'll put a link to those guys in the description. And David, if you're willing, I'd love to have you come back and show me some tips on install when we actually get these. These will probably come in, in uh, somewhere in the March time frame, I would assume. Yep. Uh, so we could show these guys the finishes but really talk about how to get a really good and detailed install. Absolutely, I can't wait. I love it. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time on The Build Show.